Hi, Tichelle. Hi. Oh, I am so excited. Okay, so you're my dad's favorite guy, Squad. <laughs> Great. I've been listening to you since I was a child, so this is pretty exciting. <laughs> what city? I'm in Minneapolis, Minnesota. My daddy's from Arkansas. Okay. So yes, <laughs> but thank you so much for taking the time out um, to speak with us here at Urban Bridges. Um, we'll go ahead and we will jump right in. First of all, congratulations thank on you. I Made It Out um, being nominated for a BET Award this year. It is so well-deserved. Um, where did this inspiration for I Made It Out come from? Um, um, I wrote a song a few years ago that said, you don't know my story. It was called Life in Favor. And I, I bring that up because I made it out to me, to me was the sequel. You know, those that have gone through, and this was before COVID, this was before uh, the pandemic. Um, I made it out speaks to everybody who has an issue. You know, it, when you are freed from it or you come through your turbulent time, you know, it's a time for celebration. So I made it out, meet you where you are, whether you're riding in the car, you can jump out, jump up and down on the sidewalk in the living room. Or if your daddy was with me, he'd rock with me right now. Because <laughs> it, it's just that church song, that church group is real simple. And uh, uh, everybody who has embraced this song has the same testimony. It speaks to what I've come through. So I'm excited about it being reborn again, you know, so that now, you know, as everybody, we make it through this season of, of, of pandemic, you know, I made it out, it's gonna be our anthem. All right, I like to hear that. Have you started on your next album or already, or is there anything that we can expect? One, one cool thing about John P. Key, never stops working, never. So I've got records in the can, I've got CDs in the can, I've got a project called 10 Women, 10 Victories. I started with Whitney Houston before she died, and I'm gonna finish that project. I've got a movie project about my father, The Lost Song. That's an amazing soundtrack. Your father's gonna love that particular hey. soundtrack. Old school <laughs> and new school together. Um, um, I've got a, a choir project um, that uh, we're working on now. We're actually doing a remake of uh, old Thomas Whitfield's song. Me and Zicardi Cortez, we're working on that this week. So I'm constantly working on him album. I did a record with nothing but hymns. And I saw Freddie Jackson on social media the other day talking about the hymn and I sent it to him this morning. So uh, I, I'm constantly, constantly, constantly working. Uh, um, um, and I'm excited about that. All right, what's your advice to all of us that are dealing with this pandemic right now? Stay true to who you are. This was a season of, of reset, and I don't try to grasp words that I hear, but reset really works because we've had time to do what I call repent. When we hear repent, we think of church and running down and telling the, the lady on the morning's bench what you did wrong, but that's not really what repent means. Repent means to rethink and reevaluate who and what you are and embrace the essence. So I've been able to paint. I'm, I'm a painter and people don't know that I've got 260 pieces. So I'm a painter, I, I build furniture. I've been doing so much. So the pandemic literally reminded us who we are. We were able to refocus and get set for what is to come. Awesome, I agree with that. Um, how did you become a part of Q Parker's latest single, I Need You? And what do you want people to get out of that song? Uh, Q Parker, first of all, is a son of mine. Um, Q Parker thought he was John B. Key from the age of six <laughs> to 15 right now. I was doing a, uh, this is a great story. I was doing a um, concert in Miami and I was doing sound check. Q Parker came in my sound check and took over and sang all the John B. Key songs. So uh, just being a part of anything that he does is amazing. I wrote an amazing song the day after uh, George Floyd was killed and it was called Let Me Breathe. And Q is featured on that along with Tony Terry, Frank McCombs, um, 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 Zicardi Cortez, so many great artists. And so we work together and he's indeed a part of the Uncle John camp. All right, awesome. Um, tell us how it was uh, working uh, on that battle with Hezekiah Walker. Tell us what was the best part about that? 
uh, well, let, let me, I, we loved it. <laughs> I, 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 I'm gonna give you an exclusive. I'm gonna give you an exclusive. Well, I wasn't gonna do it. Didn't have any. Didn't want to do it. Just never ever thought about battling. And Hez on the way off the phone. Bishop Hez and the respective uh, said, "Oh, it's okay. You're probably you know nervous, don't. And you you don't call a brother from Carolina out like that. So it was a love fest. We traveled together for years to be on with him." and just sharing that music that we shared on stages. And you know what's so cool about it? I didn't even get to play the Walk by Faith or the Wait On Him project. You know, there were so many projects. So to me, away from the battle was preparing for the battle, what songs. So I got a chance, I never listened to John P. Key because I feel like if I ever listened to him, I might sh shut it down or stop. So I keep going forward. But so to go back and hear all that music, it was a great weekend for me to really be encouraged, to be encouraged by what I've done and what I've been able to, to share with, with, with the world. Um, what is your favorite John P. Key song? Why would you ask me that now? <laughs> it's me, me, oh Lord, I'm standing in the need of prayer. <laughs> And, and look, I know that's your pops, one of his favorites too. <laughs> well, <laughs> I caught you about Why is that your favorite? You did actually. I wasn't expecting it at all. I want I wish my dad could hear you sing that. He'd be like, uh, <laughs> "Why is that your favorite song?" Um, it, it, it's a true story. I think many people back in the day would make up stories for their songs. People always ask me, is it true that the little girl really get sick? Was she really burning? And I can testify today, not only did God heal her body, she's 36, 37 years old now, and she still goes to my church and she's doing amazing. Her name is Chantel and she's my heart. I love that song. Awesome, awesome. Um, what's next for the Prince of Gospel Music? Um, a movie called The Lost Song. We've got five more scenes to shoot. Real quick, it's about my father in the 40s who has a choir and convinces 22 people to leave America to back a factory and go to New York to sign this deal. On the way to New York, um, um, uh, the Ku Klux Klan turned their bus around and shoots the tire out. So I tell his story of how he was so discouraged. And in 1975, they put the choir back together. And in the movie, it chronicles a tour with James Cleveland, um, the Caravans, um, uh, Mahalia Jackson, and, and the Dixie Hummingbirds. And it's a great movie. There's so many gospel artists in the movie. I, I did, we didn't use any professional actors or actresses because I believe church folk already know how to act. And uh, so okay. it's, a great, <laughs> it's a great movie. And um, I'm super excited. My, my, my nephew was my cinematographer, uh, Julian Pearson. And it's a, I, I'm really, when I saw the Clock Sisters, I'm glad we'll be able to add on even to the legacy of gospel music. And I'm just sure people are gonna enjoy it. My son plays my dad, John E. Key, from age 15 to 35. He's John P. Key the third. And Bishop Rance Allen plays my father from age 35 awesome. to, 50, to uh, 58. It's gonna be good. I'm excited about that. Okay, as we're wrapping up, can you leave us with how is it that you are able to still all this time stay relevant in this industry and in, um, delivering your message, delivering your ministry? How are you able to do that? And what advice can you give anyone who wants to leave a leg long, a long lasting legacy? Um, Number one, be true to yourself. Many people know my testimony. I got saved uh, in the hood, an area called Double Oaks in Charlotte. Um, I sold dope there for three and a half years and got saved in the neighborhood. It's the same neighborhood now that I pastor. So I can literally say as a pastor, I pastor where I poison. So to be able to go back to that neighborhood, create a school, an educational system for our kids, uh, to be able to go to the drug dealers, what, 22 years ago and tell them, look, you put the dogs away, stop selling dope, I'll let your kids come to the school for free. So being true to yourself, I never left my testimony. And, and I was so true to it. I've never taken a dime from the spoken word. I don't take a salary as a pastor. So I've been able to sow back. So that's been my attitude. For my birthday two weeks ago, we fed almost 
60,000 people in a week's time. That's what I wanted to do, we gave furniture. So just being true to who you are. As an artist at work, if you got a John B. Key record, you had something for your father. And if you get that same record, it was a song for you too. It was a rock out song for the kids. So one of the cool things I think about me, and, and I thank God for it, that my formula has worked because I've been honest with who I am, not just who I am as a pastor or a singer, but to the music, to the things that he's given me. I didn't break rank because everybody else started doing four chord songs. Do you do <laughs> We're going to end on that note. I yeah. am so, so grateful for this interview. I am so grateful for your time. Um, and we wish you so much more. I don't know what else more, but I can't wait to see. And thank so we you. thank you, thank you, thank you. And good luck on your award. And we thank you. Let's stay in touch so I can send your father. I got these big bags. I call oh, it God, the yes. B music, but you got to let him get it. So okay. I'll find you. I'll find you. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you.